All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets for my 243 subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing, and as always, uh, it's good to hear from you, and I enjoyed the comments that you've been leaving, and I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying the channel, and as always, keep watching. Uh, what I was going to talk about today probably isn't the most exciting subject, especially for a channel that is primarily Linux related, but I do like to talk about Macs and I do like to talk about Windows. So what I'm going to talk about today is Windows. And the reason I'm talking about it is because it's one of the reasons why I've chosen to work with Linux primarily instead of Windows. Although, uh, as with Mac, I do find a use for um, all the different platforms. So it's not just a matter of needing one or the other each one uh, can be used for certain things so they come in handy I've been doing most of my video editing on Linux lately but some video editing I still do in Mac and I have to say overall iMovie is probably a better video editor than most of the open source video editors so that's an example of why Mac is more superior uh, but when we talk about Windows, I'm actually going to talk about some reasons why I wouldn't use Windows as my full-time daily driver and why I prefer to use Linux. And these were a couple of items that concerned me that are uh, going to be made in changes in the upcoming uh, Windows anniversary release, which is slated for tomorrow, August 2nd. So without further ado, the first one that I bothers me. Um, I'm not a big fan of Cortana or any of the voice assistants as it were. Well, apparently with the upcoming anniversary release you will not be able to turn off Cortana. I do not use Cortana and I've turned off a majority of the cloud features that are available in Windows 10 as well as the privacy features. Now there's a lot of talk of course that the privacy features even when uh, set to disabled um, still do not provide the ultimate in privacy and when you think about it those reasons right there are an excellent reason to use Linux you really aren't guaranteed privacy with Microsoft Windows 10 and quite frankly Windows 10 has become a service now for the majority it might be a great service so definitely go for it if it's something that works for you I'm not saying that um, you should not use Windows 10 because of privacy issues. I think that most of us who are using Android or Apple uh, iPhone products already know that Google is very invasive when it comes to privacy issues on phones. So it's nothing really new. It's just that Windows and Microsoft in general finally caught up. Uh, that's the whole idea with the free release of Windows 10 in the first place is to get a large user base on and begin leveraging the huge amount of information that they have available. What I don't like about Cortana is one is the privacy, two is uh, resources. So I'm not a big fan of, you know, the voice assistant and I got along just fine with Cortana turned off. I don't want Cortana on and I'm gonna have to have it on for my Windows 10 systems and I think it just uses resources that are unnecessary um, for that particular service if it's not something you want so this is one of those check marks that I check off for here's another reason why I really am not too interested in Windows 10 the other one that really concerned me um, was driver signing and I do have a little bit of a mixed opinion on this. Basically what Microsoft is saying is on the anniversary of these coming out tomorrow, from here on out, all new drivers for Windows 10 will have to be signed drivers uh, through Microsoft using the Extended Validation Code Signing Certificate program. Um, so there's a couple of problems with that. And it basically affects open source more than anything basically what that means is any software that is going to be installed that requires a hook into the hardware and therefore a driver must be validated and signed by Microsoft and I'm talking about digitally signed 
uh, by Microsoft with a certificate. In order to do that, you have to be uh, a developer with a signing certificate. So you've been validated as a developer, but you also are validated um, for the driver itself. So Microsoft have to review it and then digitally sign it and it would be accepted by the Windows 10 infrastructure whenever a program is installed. So, for example, if you were using an NVIDIA card and it had an older version of the driver that worked well for you that wasn't digitally signed, which really isn't going to happen because NVIDIA does sign their drivers, it basically would mean that driver would fail to install if you were installing it after uh, the Windows 10 1607 anniversary update. So, I kind of see this as a mixed bag. If you're a regular user, this is really helpful to you as a Microsoft Windows average daily user. Basically, it's going to protect you from having an application installed that's going to try and get a hook into the hardware or deeper into the operating system uh, that should not be possible. On the other side of the coin, there's some great open source tools out there that really are not going to invest in uh, digital signing um, for Microsoft Windows 10. What does that mean for open source? Well, personally, as an open source user, to me it makes sense. Uh, if I'm an open source developer, why should I be so concerned about supporting Windows 10? Uh, I'm developing open source for open source products. As an example, many of the software packages that I use are only available on an open source platform such as Linux. So um, I can't use Kdenlive, for example, the editor that I use on Windows 10. Uh, so it just, they don't port it. So if you're developing open source, I think what we'll see is more open source, open source software specifically being developed for um, open source platforms like Linux or BSD and less for Windows 10. So it's kind of a double-edged sword on the one hand we may lose some great open source products or free products or uh, minimal fee products that we otherwise would have seen or is it good for the users? Yeah, I think it is good for the users uh, because it does give them a certain layer of protection. So those are the things that I'm thinking. Those are two features that, for me as an open source user, I see as a negative incentive to move to Windows 10 as my full-time daily driver. I'm so happy, honestly, with um, Linux and to what extent I use it, um, OS 10. I really don't see a point for me to go back to Windows full-time. And I found that Linux does everything that I need it to do. So with that being said, what are some of the Windows 10 anniversary additions, uh, additions that we can look forward to? Um, if you're a Verge reader, which I'm usually not, but I thought I would check out this article. Um, some of the um, features that they're talking about is Windows Ink that will basically let you um, draw and have a virtual ruler, which I think is really cool. I'd like to try that out and see how it works. Um, this is a huge one for me. Um, any Windows 10 systems that I use, especially I have a small Windows 10 tablet that I use to showcase to students uh, when I'm teaching introductory operating systems. Uh, you know, Microsoft Edge is the better browser. It's definitely very lean for Windows 10 systems that are hardware challenged. So. Uh, I'm really excited about Microsoft Edge getting extensions finally and they mentioned just a few uh, like Adblock and some LastPass Evernote some other tools uh, that we would find useful so that's good news I like that Cortana is going to improve um, and I think that's important if they're gonna basically cram it down users throats it better work pretty good but as I understand Cortana is actually very good as it is. I don't use it. I did use it a tiny bit in the beginning of my Windows 10 um, look-see, but really, uh, as I understand it, Cortana does very well when compared with Google or Siri. So, and again, this is just what I've read and a couple of videos that I've watched. They're going to have a dark theme, which, okay, that's great. 
and some UI tweaks. We'll see what those are. They may be useful. Um, I like tablet mode. I have all-in-ones that can flip over. I have two Lenovo's and I have an actual Windows tablet. And I, I'm going to say that the tablet interface on Windows 10 is the best one of all the tablet interfaces. To me, it's the most intuitive and easy to use. And if the whole tablet and phone battle gets lost by Microsoft, to some extent, I'm going to say it'll be a shame because I did like how the UI worked and how we could move apps to the side and quarter the apps if you wanted to. And it's just, to me, much more intuitive. I actually like Windows tablets. So I'll be testing that out on my tablet. And I have a video about the uh, Dell Venue 8 Pro that I use, my Windows 8 and Windows 10 tablet, you can take a look at. Uh, finally... We can set the time zone automatically. That'll be a nice feature. Um, got a little tired of having to manually change the time zone from Redmond, Washington, where I don't live. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really skeptical about the Windows Hello. I'm sure somebody will beat me to it, but I do plan on trying a test with a picture of myself. Very curious to see what happens. And I am not an Xbox owner, so honestly... Um, I don't see why I would care to have my Windows 10 apps on Xbox anyway, but some may. Bash in Windows may be something useful for a developer. Otherwise, I think super limited utility. So that's just where I see it. If I wanted a Bash shell, why wouldn't I just use a Linux system? Just, I don't know. That's what I would do. Project to PC. Well, um, I think this is a cool tool. Why can't we get Project to TV? I know that they have some limited utility like that, but it it just doesn't work well for me. Um, a new Skype app? I don't really have any problems with the previous one, so we'll see. Maybe it'll be better. And you can sync some phone notifications to your PC. So, not sure what they're talking about there. Oh, a Windows 10 for phone or an Android phone, so you could do either. Uh, I do have an Android phone. I'm not 100% sure if that would be useful to me. I don't know about you, but when I was working in Windows 10, and still do to some extent, I did link my Windows 10 account um, with my Google account so I could get calendar notifications, email notifications, and, and stuff like that. And I do like it. It does seem to work pretty well. But, again, there's the privacy issue. You have a, enabled a Microsoft server somewhere to collect and store data about you from another service provider so you basically got two corporations looking into your personal information instead of one is it a problem i don't know what do you think so basically the author ends up and says hey you know windows is really a service and that's the way i see it as well um, I will say with Windows, they do the best job of DPI scaling of any operating system out there. That's a major plus. Um, I still see whether I use KDE Plasma or GNOME on Linux. Scaling issues because of the app backgrounds is in um, what um, graphical structure they're using, whether it's GTK or QT or whatever. And some apps still don't work right. All the GNOME apps look beautiful and most other applications in GNOME as far as scaling goes, but there's still a whole bunch that will not look right in GNOME, such as Kden Live or the capture program I use, uh, Boco Screen, and a couple of others. So that's one feature that Windows 10 does extremely well. So that's my take on the Windows 10 anniversary update. It's a mixed bag for me. What do you think? Drop a line, let me know, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.